Welcome everyone and welcome to this week's F1 Fix Setup Track Guide. We are at Monza this week, a personal favourite of mine and many others. I do enjoy it whenever we come around here in any car and series, but in particular the fast cars. And there's no faster car than an F1 car. It really is a joy to drive around this track. I keep saying that every week at every track, but it, it truly is. I, I'm still amazed by this car and Monza to experience it with this amount of downfalls and this amount of speed is just oh, so much fun. Now, as always, guys, we set the track conditions here as per iRacing's schedule or the time and date, I shall say, which throws up track conditions which are consistent with what we should see in the officials throughout the week. So this time around, it was chucking out track temperatures of 30 to 31 degrees. Hence why I am running the soft wall tire. Um, I think that is on the threshold hold of really the soft tire, holding on for a, for a full fixed length race. Any hotter than that, then the medium tire would probably be the choice. It is probably the choice in the open setup series, but soft tire will be suitable for the fixed race length. Now we do have to be careful of how much we put through our rear tires though. Monza is quite known for being hard on the rear tires because we're going from very high speeds to low speed chicanes or corners. So we need to be a bit careful on the throttle out of those corners to not spin up the rears and for one, spin the car because it's very easy to do coming out of low speed corners and not to put too much degradation through the rear tires because you will suffer at the end of the race, especially if track temperatures do creep up. So in those track conditions, 31 degrees, this lap time that I set was a 120.93. That is with the race setup. So that is a full tank of fuel and the balanced ERS mode or battery mode. So as always qualifying mode, you're going to definitely go a couple of seconds quicker because you've got the battery deployment mode set to qualifying and you've got a lighter tank of fuel. But this is all about making you more consistent, hopefully making you faster at the same time. And as always, we're gonna see the lap that I set from a cockpit view, then a fire chase camera angle, and then we're gonna analyze that lap and see how we put it all together. There's a couple of areas around this track to be careful of, so be sure to stick around and see what I've got to say. So lo and behold, let's get into it. Remember to hit that like and subscribe button, turn those notifications on, and enjoy.
So that was the lap from cockpit and fire chase camera angle. Let's see how we put that together. And just before we do head into the analysis though, as always, want to bring your attention to my brake bias. This time around, I've got it set to 53.5, as you can see from the orange number on the dash. Now, this is a little bit more further forward than I normally have it. Now, you may be thinking that's only 0.5 further forward than I normally do, because uh, 53 is the furthest back we can now move the brake bias but that actually does make a world of difference. Now, Monza, we do want generally a bit more forward brake bias because we are at very top high speeds here. And that means that when we are braking, there is a lot of weight shift onto the front of the car, onto the nose of the car and those front tires. So we want to have a bit more brake bias and a bit more braking capability on those front tires. If you have it too far back, like I found out at 53, the rear just wiggles about too much under braking and it makes it very difficult to hit your turning points and to make the apex of the corner. So as always, brake bias is a personal preference. Use that as a base and play around with it and see what works for you. Likewise though, you don't want it too far forward because it's also very easy to lock up the fronts with the, t the high end speeds that we've got. So there's a fine margin between finding out what works and what doesn't because we can have a slight lock up going into the chicane, i.e. the first corner uh, and still make the corner and not really affect our time. But there's a difference between locking up too much and compromising your entry entirely and having to bail out of the chicane because you'll get a terrible slowdown and it will just cost you so much time and you'll get the ump. <laughs> so yeah, play around and see what works for you. But let's head into the analysis now. So we've just come out of Parabolica. Uh, if anyone who is unfamiliar with it, that is the last corner, that is the name. And Parabolica is a long swooping right hander and we start accelerating quite early out of that last corner. So you can see my battery deployment is already down to 90. Don't think I was quite at 100 when I got into the corner, but near enough. So we've already started deploying the battery. Now, this is really important. The last corner is very important too what is your prime overtaking opportunity down this main straight where we've got DRS mode into the first chicane. Now, I'll speak more about Parabolica and how to tackle that at the end of the lap because it is the last corner, but just be wary or just be noteful that the last corner is so, so important around here. I'd say it's the most important corner on this circuit. Now, We've just gone over the start finish line and we're approaching our first DRS mode, which is down the main straight. And if you now your last corner and you're within probably, I would say half a second, you are easily gonna draft past the person in front um, with DRS mode and with a slipstream. So, prime overtaking opportunity down here, as you see in real life. But the kicker of that is that you are gonna be carrying so much more speed than you normally would. So you need to be very careful of your braking markers and where you brake. Now, in this instance, I haven't got draft, but I have got DRS mode open. So what we want to be keeping an eye out for is on the left hand side we have got bald markers we've got 150 150 now you want to be keeping an eye out for the 100 but as you may see from my braking indicators here or throttle inputs i am braking on what is an imaginary 125 marker now if you want specifics i am braking on the end of this hedge on the left hand side but it's very hard to differentiate when that the end of that hedge is when you're going at uh, 329 kilometers an hour <laughs> in VR um, or even on a monitor so I'm focusing on the 100 and I'm braking just before it so we're braking all the way down 
and we're gonna be going down into first gear. But back again to when if you have a draft, if you're having someone's draft and you've got DRS open, just be wary that uh, you may have to pull your braking marker back just a touch because you're gonna be probably carrying an extra 10 kilometers an hour, 15 kilometers an hour with DRS and a draft. Um, so yeah, just be careful there guys because T1 is where we have all the incidents, let's be honest. Uh, once the field spreads out even, it's, it's where all the crashes happen is in T1, into T1 and it's for that main reason because the draft is so powerful and the DRS is so powerful that people just miss their braking markers and overshoot the corner. So be careful here guys. Now we're breaking down into first gear and we're turning in just before we get to the end of the AstroTurf as you can see. And we're gonna trail break into the chicane, into the entry. Now this is a tricky corner guys, because one, it's very easy to shift down very quickly and you lose control of the rear and by shifting down too quickly. So you wanna be you want to time your gear shifts properly. Don't rush them. And then this corner here, we can cut. We can cut the entry into the chicane over this curb. Now, if I just bring your attention to Far Chase, you can see here that we've got nearly all four wheels up on this curb. Now, I can actually be a little bit further over to the right here, but this is very, very fine margins into this first corner, because if I get all four wheels on the inside of the white line, which indicates the track limits, I will get a slowdown. Not a 1X, or I'll get a 1X for my troubles, but I'll also get a slowdown. And it's a very painful slowdown because You've then got Curva Grande, which is the next long right-hander into the second chicane. And it's just, it's painful, uh, especially early parts of the race as well, when you're in a tightly packed bunch field, um, you're gonna lose so many spots. So just, uh, yeah, just be careful here, guys. This is the quickest way to take this corner because we're trying to open up the left-hander of the, of the second part of the chicane. But you can see there, we'll bring it back to our throttle inputs, but it's when we get on the chicane, but I'm off the throttle, I'm dabbing the throttle a bit to move the car forward. And then very quickly, I'm off it again, another dab of the throttle just to control the nose of the car to get it turning in. And we're keeping it tight to this apex. Now, this is a horrible sausage curb here for anyone who watched uh, the real race, real life race last year. Uh, you will know this is the curb that Max Verstappen hit and ended up on top of Hamilton. So it's not a nice curb whatsoever, but we're nice and tight to it. Back to far chase, as you can see. Could be a little tighter, if I'm honest, but this is okay. I'm getting wheels up on the apex. And I'm still in first gear at this point. Now, you could shift to second gear, short shift to second gear. I did try that. But the problem I had with second gear is that I didn't quite have enough front end turning. Standing first gear allowed me to get the car turning in to the apex tighter. Uh, second gear didn't really have that for me. It was a bit more difficult. And also I didn't have as much rear traction in second gear as I did in first. Now I don't normally advocate being in first gear because this car has a very high amount of torque, as I say in pretty much every track guide. And it's so easy to just put our foot on the throttle early and spin the car. I mean, we can spin this car all the way up in fourth gear, fifth gear, if we put our foot straight down on the throttle out of a corner. So first gear, as you can imagine, we have to be very delicate. And as you can see, I'm halfway on the throttle and even then I'm hitting the rev limiter. So it's then that once I've straightened up the steering wheel, I'm into second and then I'm quickly short shifting into the upper gears. Making our way 
up through Curva Grande. So yeah, first gear is the way through the chicane, but very quickly you're working your way up through the gears, half throttle until you've straightened out the car. You just get better rear traction than you do in second. But by all means, if you're struggling in first gear, try second gear and make sure you nail the exit because it's not so much, well, the entry is important, but it's not so much the entry that matters in the chicane. It's about that exit. If you've got someone behind you, you nail that exit out of uh, the first chicane, you should be able to defend down into Curva Grande. If you get a rear wheel rob wobble, you get a snap of oversteer or a tank slapper, then you're gonna be a sitting duck to the guy behind into the second chicane. It's gonna be an easy, be an easy overtake for them. So, we're gonna play it on now, and we are working our way around the long right-hander, Curva Grande, as I keep calling it. Keeping it tight to the apex, cover as little track as possible. Battery is currently being deployed. And then we stand over to the right hand side to open up the entry into the left hand chicane. Now what we keep an eye out for is the 100 ball marker. We're braking just as we get to it in a straight line and we're gonna be shifting down into third gear here. And we're gonna be entering the corner in third and then we shift to second just before we reach it so i actually thought i was in third gear a lot longer there so apologies but i shift to second just before i get to the corner while trail braking and very similar to the last chicane we can also cut the entry of this curb once again, being very careful that we don't cut the corner too much because otherwise you will get a slowdown. But here you can see how how kind of uh, nice iRacing is to us really because I've got all four wheels here on the inside of this white line. And that's within track limits. So I don't quite agree with that. I think um, the there needs to be a little bit more of a deterrent for these curbs. I don't think they are exactly like this in real life anymore. Um, you can't even go up them in um, in these cars. So yeah, I don't particularly like it, but we have to use every advantage that we can. So yeah, this is the quickest way to get over. Back to cockpit view. Now that does throw the car up a little bit and you can see that as I'm off the throttle and I got on the throttle. Well, I got on the throttle as we got to the curb. And then we've short shifted into third gear, if you can see there. So I'll just bring that back. As we've hit the tarmac, we're into third gear. And then exactly the same as the last chicane, we want to be tight to this apex without getting on the sausage curb. This is a little bit more raised, this curb, but we can still attack it, as you see, on half throttle at this point, because if we're on full throttle, the rears are just gonna light up and the car's just gonna overtake you or the rear of the car is gonna overtake you. Then as we straighten out the steering wheel, working our way up the gears into full throttle, trusting the traction, and then down into the next corner. Into what is called the Lesmo, or the first Lesmo. There are two Lesmos, two quick right-handers, and these are corners that I don't particularly like in any car. <laughs> uh, they're not my favorites, um, but they are essential to getting a decent lap time. And we are braking just before we get to this Bar orange barrier on the right hand side now as you can see there's no indication here there's no uh, brake markers here that are indicating how far away we are from the corner so we have to use what we can we're braking just before we get to the orange barrier that's what i use turning in as we see the apex down into fifth gear little bit of trail braking as you can see just to control the front nose of the car and then we get on the throttle as we hit this concrete patch here. Now I've got on the throttle a little bit early, 
that's okay, but that's what I'm feeling. I'm, I'm looking for this concrete patch on the right hand side to get on full throttle. And then open up the steering. And being careful not to run over the white line here. Now, if we just go back to far chase camera angle, a little bit difficult to see with the exposure, very bright, but you can see here, my wheels are on that white line. If I'm slightly over here, then I will get an off track. Now it's a very painful off track because it's so easy to run wide here. Obviously don't run too wide because we've got the, the gravel. You won't get a slowdown, so strategically, if you need a strategic off track and you're chasing someone down in the last moments of the race, you can push it a bit wide here and take some off tracks. But um, if you're like me, you will probably pick up a number of 1Xs at these two corners <laughs> throughout the race. Um, Monza is not a good track for safety rating, <laughs> to say the least. So yeah, fifth gear round there, quickly working our way up the gears, and then we're keeping it over to the left-hand side. Keep an eye out for the 50, braking just before it. Down into fifth gear. As we hit the apex, keeping it tight to the apex as we can. Now, we can get two wheels over this curb. It's not too detrimental to us. Um, ideally, you probably want to stay off of it, but if you do turn a little bit too early, it's not the end of the world. It just unsettles the car a little bit. But you can see there, I'm on full throttle, getting on the throttle as we hit the apex. You can see there, I, I, I got up on the curb. And then likewise, like the last Lesmo, we want to keep it inside, in, uh, inside the confines of the track. So once again, very, very fine margins here. I'm actually on the white line. And then we come to our second DRS zone, heading down into the Iskari chicane. So as we come out of the, Lesmo, the second Lesmo, quickly into DRS mode, and we can overtake down the back straight here into Ascari. Now, I was actually a little bit delayed on my DRS opening. You can see there. I waited uh, oof, quite a long time to open that, so a bit of time lost. It did cost me, don't know how much time it cost me, but uh, DRS mode, just delaying that DRS mode, even for a, a second or two, costs you quite a severe amount of time. So this, this lap time could have been improved upon. Now keeping it tight to the apex here, covering as little track as possible. Now here is a little bit of a tidbit for you guys. I did notice this when I was racing F3 and I did a track guide for that car and series a while ago. Now as we go under the bridge here, there is a dip. Now if we just play it forward, you can see there, the car just goes up and down. We'll play it slow motion again. goes up and down a bit. A bit difficult to see in the slow motion, but you do feel it and you do hear the floor scrape the bottom of, or the bottom of the floor scrape the track. Now, you won't suffer floor damage if you're over to the left-hand side of the track or the right-hand side of the track. If you are in the center of the track, you will get floor damage. The dip is more severe in the middle of the track here under the bridge than it is on the left or the right. So if you are overtaking someone, you wanna make sure that you don't stick in the middle. You wanna make sure you're left or right because you will suffer floor damage and it will cost you top end speed. Um, I'm speaking from experience in F3 cars and this car is no different. So be careful there guys. Something that people forget because if you're used to racing GT cars or uh, LMP2 cars, etc., you do feel the dip when you're going through the middle, but because it's got a larger ride height, um, you don't feel it, um, you don't suffer damage. Whereas in these open wheel cars, obviously low ride height, we feel it. So be careful. 
Now we're heading down into Ascari Chicane and what we keep an eye out for is the 100 board marker. Shifting down into fourth gear here before we get into the apex, it's essential that you oh, it's essential that you shift down into fourth gear before you get into the apex. Keeping it as tight to these sausage curves as you can without going over them. We don't have the luxury of touching these sausage curves. If you do, your car will go into a spin. So tight to them, but avoid them. Fourth gear, full throttle, or getting onto full throttle. Now, fourth gear, you will very quickly hit the rev limiter here. So as you get out of that corner, quickly shift up into fifth gear then into sixth gear, but this is where uh, this car is just so much fun. We're on full throttle, in fifth gear. Car is just planted around here, even with full fuel. Tight to those apexes without touching the sausage curbs. And then heading down into Parabolica. Now, if you do come out of a Scarry chicane close behind someone, you've got a bit of a dilemma because it may be tempting to go for the overtake into Parabolica. What you have to remember is that after the last corner, there is a very long main straight with a DRS mode. If you overtake them, before Parabolica, you will lose the DRS activation. So, be strategic here, guys. If you come out of the of Ascari Chicane and you're right behind someone, you're best off just sitting behind them, maintaining the gap, and then waiting to pass them easily down into the first corner because you may think you've got the job done, overtaking them into the last corner, but then they're just going to breeze back past you into the first chicane. So, yeah, uh, it's a bit of a dilemma. It, the racer in us always wants to overtake at every corner we can, but personally, it's not the smartest decision. Very rarely do I overtake someone into Parabolica unless it's the last corner of, sorry, it's yeah, the last corner of the last lap um, because you're just going to get overtaken down the main straight into the chicane. But how we take it is we are keeping an eye out for the 50 ball marker, but in particular what I keep an eye out for is this patch of AstroTurf that we've got here on the left, the end of it. So it's just before the 50, that is what I am using as my braking marker, as you can see here. There's the end of it and we're braking. Now we're braking in a straight line and we are shifting down into fifth gear here. And we want to hit the apex as we get to this podium, stairs, gantry <laughs> here. And then when we want to get back on full throttle, is just before we get to this set of headlights here. Or floodlights, sorry, not headlights. Because we've got a lot of downfalls, we can trust the car, trust the grip. Fifth gear, allow the car to move over to the left-hand side. But don't get on the throttle too early because you will drift the car over too far. And there is no grip here, guys. Speaking from experience and testing the waters, there's no grip out here. Um, this car actually does feel the undulations in this AstroTurf to this uh, ungrippy, slick-like um, track here, this Astro um, asphalt. So uh, it only, it, not only does it bobble up and down, it's not grippy and the rear just goes on you. So you definitely wanna keep your tires inside this white line. And then there we go. Full throttle all the way down to the start finish line. And that is a lap of Monza. 
120.93. So yeah, hope they help you guys. Um, I hope you've learned a lot from that, a few little tidbits there. It's a really enjoyable track and a fast one as well. But uh, yeah, hopefully we can just keep the crashes to a minimum here this week and have some good wheel to wheel racing. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed that. Remember to hit that like and subscribe button, turn those notifications on and see you for the next one. Bye.